Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate it, Brother Earl, stepping up. Remind the Lord. Chapter number 23, this is not the message, it's just the scripture of the blessings offered. In the book of Leviticus, chapter number 23, the Lord instructed Moses to instruct the priest, says that uh, in verse number 10, speaking to the children and saying to them, When you come into the land which I have given to you, and you reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wait the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow or tomorrow after the Sabbath. Sabbath is Saturday, tomorrow after the Sabbath, first day of the week, that's the day, Sunday. Say, the priest shall wave it. You shall offer on that day when you wave the sheep as the lamb without blemish as the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. For it's a sacrifice that be complete. Jesus, our Savior, the Lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world. But our offerings, we still come and offer of our first fruits unto the Lord that they may be needed in His house. Will you stand here, feet? Let's offer a blessing over the offering. And then remain standing as we go right into the book of the Word of God in Acts chapter 1. And uh, we'll read from that. Let us pray. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to assemble ourselves in your house. We thank you for the privilege of coming and giving you back that portion of which you have given unto us, that there may be reasons and meat in your house, that there may be provision that you have provided through your uh, servants and that to bring into your house, that there may be enough. Lord, we ask you, as you have said, to give and it shall be given good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give back unto you. We do so in honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave it all. The lambs. We thank you, Father, for our Savior, that we could come by the power of the Holy Spirit to him, and he bring the intercession to you for us. And we come to give back that portion unto you. We ask you to bless the remainder of the service. Continue to anoint your word. Prepare all of our hearts even now to hear what you have for your church. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior's holy name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 1. You'll turn there. Grab up this morning. Acts chapter 1. That water's like this air conditioner up here. That's all right, brother. It's all right. It's wet. Yeah. That air's blowing, but it ain't no ice. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 1. Beginning verse number 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. 
being seen of them, being the disciples, being seen of them for 40 days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, you have heard of me. For John drew the baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days henceforth. You may be seen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, we just want to call before you to thank you. We may beseech you to obtain your mercy. Oh, thank you, Lord. All that you have done, all that you're going to do, and all that you're still doing with us today. In Christ's name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Here in the book of Acts, the beginning of the book of Acts, it's the beginning of the history of the birth of the church. Christ had been crucified just as he had said that he told the disciples that he would go unto the cross and be crucified and on the third day he would rise again. And he, we celebrated Passover, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ not many days ago, but on this past Thursday was the 40th day since Passover. And on the 40th day here Jesus talking to the disciples on the Mount called all of it and assuring them just as he did in the other gospels that he'd be with them and as he ran away he would come again and he said a little while there in John's gospel that you see me and then a little while you'll see me no more but he said I'll always be with you he told also in John who John wrote in his gospel that it's a must or it's expedient that I go away for if I go not away, then the Comforter will not talk. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit. He said, but if I go away, I will send another unto you. And him ye shall hear, for he shall bear witness of me. The Holy Spirit of Comfort. The Spirit of Truth. Here, and if you go back to Luke's Gospel, at the closing of Luke's Gospel, and the opening of the book of Acts, if you'll tie these two scriptures together, of course you have John's Gospel right in the middle, but it is here in, in Luke's Gospel, the last chapter, number 24, in verse... Verse number 44, Jesus said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was wet yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which the written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He said all this must be fulfilled that Moses wrote down in the first five books and in all the prophets, all the minor prophets, all the major prophets, every prophecy that had spoken or pointed to Jesus Christ, he said that it all must be fulfilled. And also in the Psalms, the singing, the praise, it must be fulfilled concerning him. And in verse number 46, there it said, Then he opened their understanding. The Holy Spirit had opened their understanding that they, they had that epiphany. They finally got it. The Holy Spirit assured it in their hearts that He was the Christ. Remember even John the Baptist before when He was, even though He had baptized the Lord Jesus and seen the Spirit of God covering and coming down upon the cross as a, a Spirit, as a dove descending down. And, and, and He said, Behold the Lamb of God that came away in the world, but it was very John the Baptist that when he was arrested and when he was put into prison before he was killed, he sent and asked word, says, is this the Christ or should we look for another? Is this the true Messiah or should we look for another one? Or why is it? And he didn't have that understanding neither, even though he knew by the unction of the leading of the Holy Spirit of God that he had been out in the wilderness preaching the truth and preaching about Jesus. Then in that moment, you know, Satan afflicted him and he had that doubt of whether he was the truly the Christ. And Jesus sent word back to John that he was Christ. Well, no need looking for another one. But that through believing, in believing, we receive 
And that believing through the Word of God, first hearing the Word of God, and believing by faith in the Word of God, then we receive that same understanding that the disciples here received. Remember Peter doubted? Thomas doubted? They wasn't really so much that it, they didn't know, but they just didn't understand. They didn't have that fullness of understanding yet. And thus it is in our life also. When we first come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we face. We don't have that full understanding until you've been rooted and grounded by love in the Word of God for some time and seasoned by the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. And then that second work of grace or that second measure of sanctification, that very power of the Holy Spirit will come upon us. That's what Jesus says to wait. Wait here. Look here back in Acts. Well, first let me finish reading Luke. Who is that? Then go right into Acts. 40. Then he opened their eyes to understand them, might understand the Scripture. 46. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning word at Jerusalem. To the Jew first, but then also to the Gentile. For this reason, Jesus came. It was for a reason that He was crucified in Jerusalem. John said He came into His own, but His own received Him not. But to them that did receive Him, to them gave He power to be what? The children of God, the sons and daughters of God. And, and, and continuing on there in verse 48, and ye are witnesses of these things. He's telling his disciples, you're my witnesses. You've seen this. Luke writing this, and he had, he had got this documentary from all of the other disciples in, the, in, in approximately 30 years after the crucifixion, and he had written it down as he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Jesus continues speaking in 49, says, Behold, I send the promise. I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry you in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That same thing he said in verse number 4 of Acts 1. Wait for the promise of the Father that you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? See, they were still looking for a physical restoration. They were still looking for a ruler to come in to take back over the power that the Romans had inflicted upon the Jews. But Jesus is talking about a kingdom much mightier than that. Amen. He was talking about a people much mightier than that. Because if it only come for just the Jews, we'd be left out. Yes. But thus he said, it behooved Christ to have suffered. He, it, it, it was moved upon him. He was moved by the Holy Spirit to go through that suffering. To go through them temptations. To go through them trials. <laughs> that you and I may receive and know him today. That for John, truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And again, this was the 40th day that Christ spoke these things. And they said, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus said to them, it's not for you to know the times of the season. Those disciples, it's not for you to know the times or season which the Father had put in His own power. But ye shall receive power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. He said it's going to begin right here in Jerusalem. It's going to begin here in Jerusalem. When we were in Israel uh, two years ago, a little over, we, we bought this shirt that has the Jerusalem cross on it. The Jerusalem cross is this four points of the cross signifying the north, the south, the east, and the west that God gathers all of His own into one 
that God gave him it all in the one, in the Christ. He gave it all of our sins and placed them upon His Son in Jerusalem, upon that cross. And then it goes out. The other four little cross signify the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. See, you can strike a match and a flame will burn. You can light a candle and just a single flame will burn. But if you stick that flame to some fuel, Amen. if you stick that flame in some leaves, if you stick it in some paper, or if you stick it into a, uh, uh, next to a gas pipe, it's going to create a fire. It's going to be a big yes. fire. See, that's what it, it meant. It started there in Jerusalem. He said, Be you, there you here, wait for the promise which He has promised, not only to the disciples then, but to us today. In Isaiah chapter number 40, chapter number, Isaiah 40, 31, says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. And sometimes we're not very patient. Sometimes we want to get and go. Sometimes we don't want to wait. That flame starts burning and we want to spread it right away. But he says, wait till you're endued with power. Yes. At that moment when the Holy Spirit is present, at that moment when the fire starts to burn even brighter, at that moment you know that you know that the presence of the Lord is there with you, to be that witness. And that's when Jesus says, you don't have to take no thought of what you'll say or what will be given in that day. He said, well, the Spirit will give you what you need to say in that day. That be that witness unto me, both Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost, parts of the world. See, the Lord had spoken. <laughs> Let's turn back to Ezekiel. Let's go back to the prophets. He said, all this must be what? Fulfilled. That's spoken concerning me. In Ezekiel chapter 30 something or other, we're going to have to go there too, so when we get there we'll find it. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel 30, around 36, 37, 36. Oh. Ezekiel chapter 36. Begin that. I was going to be at verse 24, but we need to back up to verse number 21 because it was his name's sake. His name's on the line here. Not Israel. The Lord's name. Verse 21 of Ezekiel chapter 36 says, But I pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel has profaned among the heathen where they went. Therefore saith the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake. Remember what the psalmist says? He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Not ours, not Israel, His holy name's sake. Verse 23, For I, and I will sanctify, I'll cleanse my great name, which has been profaned among the heathen which have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. So, we're not saved for just our own. We're saved and sanctified for His name's sake. Why? That He may be known. That He may be known. It ain't about what what I'm doing. It ain't about what I've done for the Lord, but it's about what He has done in me. It is about what He has done for me, and it is about serving Him completely and giving Him all the honor and all the glory. It's not for me. He can take me out to another and replace me more. 
says, I shall be sanctified in you before their very eyes. Now look at verse number 24. If you want to write down May the 10th, 1948, this is when you'll see this completed, this prophecy spoken of. Completed May the 10th, 1948. It says, For I will take you from among the heathen. Remember Ezekiel through the Holy Spirit speaking to Israel. He said, I'll take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Then will you be baptized with the cleanness of my spirit. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from your idols will I cleanse you. Verse number 26, a new heart also will I give unto you and a new spirit will I put in you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, within you, within you. Remember that, within you, and cause you then to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. <laughs> Out on the southern steps of the Temple Mount was the uh, the gates that most would come in, most of the Gentiles would come in through. And just outside these gates were a long set of steps that have been unearthed today that are still there, dating back 2,000 years plus. The very steps that Jesus taught the disciples of, right out from these steps were many pools of water, many places of baptism or many places of being cleansed because when you come on the temple mount you didn't go in dirty you come and you, you prayed and you washed your hands you washed your head and you washed your feet before you entered into the presence of the Lord it was in this very setting that after Jesus had spoke on the 40th day he told him to wait for the promise of the Father just right outside these southern gates was the upper room. Right outside these southern steps of the upper room where the disciples had gathered. Jesus said, wait till you be in the house from on high. For on the 50th day, it wasn't just by chance, but it was one of the feast requirements where all males were required three times of Israel. All males of Israel were required three times a year to appear before the Lord and they were to appear and they were not to appear empty handed. They were to bring an offer. They would have come three times a year. The first time was a Passover in the spring of the year. The second time was 50 days after Passover or Pentecost. That they were appearing the third time was in the fall season. The last festival was John before, which is the day of atonement. The three times a year, but here on the 50th day of Pentecost was the feast of Pentecost that, the, that not only the Jews but others had assembled, but primarily the Jews had come into that very temple now. They were there in this place on the 50th day. This takes us here to the fulfillment of what Jesus said, Mary, here do you be do with power from on high. For on the 50th day, take you to Acts chapter number 2, begin at verse number 1. <laughs> and in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, forked tongues, like as of a fire. Licking, moving, burning, quickly, suddenly, rushing, mighty wind, a sound from heaven and it filled where they were all sitting. Verse number 4 says that they were all, not part, all, were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Moving on down to verse number 12, it says, They were all amazed and were out of doubt, saying one to another, What means this? Others mocking says, These men are full of new wine. Because this carried out, this little play that began in the upper room, yes. that in verse 1 said that the disciples were gathered with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and others were there together. And, and another account says there was 20 there, 120 there in the upper room. They were all gathered together. And the fire of the Holy Spirit come upon them, and it couldn't be contained in the house. For Jesus has said it must begin in Jerusalem, but you be a witness of me when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the world. They went out of that upper room. They went down to the temple now. They went to their southern steps where people were coming in and people started seeing the witness of the power of the Holy Spirit upon them. And many had never heard of this one named Jesus, but they had come to see and they won't come with the power of the Holy Spirit. They didn't even know what was going on. But when they were down, they began to believe. They come seeking and they believe. They wanted something more than they had seen out of, out of the Jews or out of the priests or out of the other prophets. They wanted to see something and believe in something that was real. They were gathered there. The Lord give them a Holy Ghost set up. You ever get somewhere and you didn't know why he was there? And then the Holy Spirit come upon him and then you knew the reason why he was there? Oh, thank you, Jesus. He said, because there was men in, in all different kinds of languages heard them speak in, in an unknown tongue, but yet they were hearing them speak in their own language. <coughs> Only the Lord could do this. They were the wonderful works of God. That's where you get in verse number 12. They were all amazed and were in doubt saying, What means this? Others, they're mocking. They're always going to be mocking. The they're always going to be doubting. They're always going to be skeptic. They were mocking saying, All these men just drunk on new wine. They're just full of new wine. But Peter, Peter, the one who just a few days, 50 days ago, not even two months, had denied him. It said three times, I know it, I don't even curse. It said, I don't know it. But here was Peter, verse number 14, but Peter, but Peter had been changed. He'd been changed in his spirit. Yes. Jesus spoke to him and said, Peter, do you love me? On the Sea of Galilee. Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love me. He said, think about sheep. Feeding my sheep. He said, Do you love me? Three times. He told me, Do you love me? He said, Yes, Lord, and you know I love you. He said, Feed my sheep. And then a little bit later on down through there, Peter asked, He says, uh, What about this little thing here on your breast? So what about John there? That's the blood that's laying on you. What's, what's he for? What's he going to do? Jesus says, well, what's it to you, Peter, if he tarries until I come again? And, and others thought that he said, well, John's going to live until Jesus comes back. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, what's it to you, Peter, if I tarry, if, if John tarries till I come back? He just looked at Peter and he said, Peter, you follow me. Yeah. It don't matter about what John's doing over here. He said, Peter, you follow me. Yeah. You follow me. It was that Peter. It was that Peter that was following Jesus. It was that Peter that seen the Lord and jumped out of the boat and went to him. It was that Peter that had doubted upon the time. It was that Peter that had denied him. But it was the Peter that had been converted. For he was no longer silent. But now he was Peter, Pepper, the rock. Firm foundation. Now he knows that he knows. That he knows. Because he had been an eyewitness to the account. Not only. <laughs> the count of the crucifixion, but to the very count of the resurrection. For with Peter and John, they went running when they heard the word that he went in along in the tomb. They went running to the tomb. They had to see for themselves. And when they ran and went inside, they seen the grave clothes still there. And they seen the napkin that was upon his face laid to his side. Jesus seemed to find out, I'll not be back in this place no more. I'm gone. The stone's been rolled back. No. He was gone. It's that Peter that had that encounter. It was that Peter that knew the many infallible proofs that 
that Luke talked about here in chapter 9 of 3 that showed himself alive after many infallible proofs for 40 days and he spoke to them in things pertaining to the kingdom of God. It was Peter there that heard all these things and John wrote down and Jesus had told Peter to follow me. John wrote down, he said, this is the disciples which testified these things. They wrote these things down. And we know that his testimony is true, meaning Jesus' testimony is true. In verse number 25 of John's Gospel, chapter number 21, John writes, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, of which if I should write them down, every one of them, he said, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain all of the books that should be written. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Thus it was here that Luke talked about in verse number 3 of Acts 1 when he said he spoke of many things pertaining to the kingdom of God. There's a whole lot of things that he told them that wasn't written down. But yet they had And yet they went out and shared them. As they, they knew without a doubt. But was this Peter here in Acts number 2 that verse number 14 he says, but Peter standing up with the eleven he wasn't by himself, but he was just a spokesman. The other eleven was there with him, including Matthias. This was his first job, first day on the job, or first mission on the job. That he had been appointed with the eleven, as the twelve to replace Judas. Said, but he was lifting up his voice, Peter, and said unto them, You mean of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be ye be this known unto you, and hear hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Rick, tell them what the third hour of the day is. 9 a.m. It's just 9 o'clock in the morning. They ain't drunk. It's still too early. But this is which was spoken by the prophet. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Spoken by the prophet Joel. You can read it in Joel's prophecy. It says, For it shall come to pass that in the last day, says God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and for my servants and my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my Spirit, and they shall say thus, saith the Lord, thus, thus the Lord, it's him, it's not me. Thus they shall prophesy. Amen. Thus they shall prophesy. In these last days, we're seeing it all over. We've seen it encountered this morning in the Bible study. When one spoke of, thus said the word of God. And in the very scripture of Corinthians, there in verse chapter number 14, now remember the verse, it said, but all may prophesy. One by one, all of us may prophesy and speak thus said the word. So when the anointing and the Holy Spirit of God comes upon us and you know that that fire is burning within and the flicker grows brighter and brighter, it ain't us speaking, it's the Holy Spirit speaking. But when He speaks, He confirms what His Word has said. And you can open up the very Word of God and speak what thus saith the Lord. Yes. <laughs> In these last days, He'll pour out His Spirit on all flesh. I've seen His baby brother. She said, out of the mouth of babes, thou hast perfected the praise. I've seen it in her Bible class, sitting right back here in the office, her speaking what the Lord has said. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your sons and your daughters, the Spirit will be poured about on them, and they shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions, the old men shall dream dreams. Now I'm all right with dreaming dreams and getting older. But one say that he wants to keep seeing visions and be young, stay young. He didn't want to start dreaming dreams. I'm ready to start dreaming dreams. I'm happy. And the revelations, being of Jesus Christ, because I'm getting closer to him, Jesus. I know I'm getting one more day closer to him. Get close to him. And he keeps speaking to me, Rick. He keeps showing me things that just ain't right in my life that 
I need to take care of. He keeps showing me little areas that I need to work on. Little areas that I need to clean up. Little areas that I need to put behind me. Little things that Satan keeps bluffing me with. But again, as I pray, just as the Apostle Paul, I keep hearing his voice say, My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. For in my weakness you have perfected strength. The weak things of God are stronger than we are. And there ain't nothing weak about God. But His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Joel goes on to say, as Peter was speaking, and I'll show you wonders in heaven above the sides and the earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor, and smoke. We're just waiting on, we've done seen the fire of the Holy Spirit. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. We're still waiting on these things before the great and notable day of the Lord. But until then, verse number 21, but it shall come to pass. It's going to happen. It has happened and it will continue to happen that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Joel yeah. prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> Not only saved, but Joel prophecy. If you'll go back to the book of Joel in the King James Version of the Bible, he says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Yeah. Shall be delivered. And he does you too. There is still that delivering power. Peter goes on to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit and these he moved out into the southern steps of the Temple Mount where he had an audience where the baptismal pools was. And it said that 3,000 yeah. people believed and were baptized. Well, they come to him and said, Peter, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized. refreshing the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, that little flame that turned into a great fire that is able to consume all that we are to burn away our impurities, to burn away, the Lord says, come by me gold tried by the fire. Come by me, gold that's been tried by the fire. For the purest of the pure, who is tried by fire, he takes away the bad. He takes away the old. The old. He has to throw the fire in to get the old nature. Sometimes simmer in a burning to get it to come to the top, to bring it out into the light. To bring it out into the light. But we still like to hide in darkness and do things in darkness. But the Holy Spirit, for His name's sake, not yours. His name's sake. His name's on the line, Stephen, yes. when he shed his blood for you, brother. His name's on the line when he gave his life for us for the remission of sin. His name's on the line. But not only we get saved, but we get delivered, but we become that witness of the power of God within us to go tell somebody else what great things the Lord has done. That they too also may believe. That's why He chose Pentecost. That's why He chose the feast. That's why on the 50th day after Passover they were assembled there in Jerusalem that He chose that very appointed time. They were set up. 3,000 of them come into the kingdom of God. But it was the only place, sister, that they was baptismal pools enough to baptize them all. Hallelujah. Whether they sprinkled, whether they took their head and dumped it in it, or got all the way in it or burst them. I don't know. Don't really matter. But they were cleansed by the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God. For Jesus says, you are clean through the Word which I have spoken to you. And then, they the devils in hell to take that away from you. That's right. That's right. Come on. They might buffet you. They can't take that away from you. I know 
in whom I have believed. Yes. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. Turn over into the in the, the book of Romans. See, let's get to Acts chapter 9. This church began. The birth 3,000 was saved. The fire spread from Jerusalem. Next it went. It first come to the Jews and those who were in around Jews. And then it went to Samaria. Samaria was a mixed race of people. Jew and Gentile. They were a mixed race that the Jews despised. But Jesus come to save and to love us all. He comes and he told his disciples, he said, Turn ye here to be new and power from on high. He said, After that the Holy Ghost is coming upon you, shall be witness of me in both Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria first, and spread into Samaria, spread to the outcast, and then it went into the uttermost parts of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you Jesus. For it was there. <laughs> and spread abroad. Stephen, one of the martyrs, when he was crucified, or not stoned, excuse me, wasn't crucified, he was stoned, when Stephen was stoned, there was one named Saul who gave consent unto his death. He said, yeah, we're going to kill all these Christians. We're going to stop this Christ. We're going to stop this message of Jesus from going around. And Paul had letters. He had rest warrants. He was heading on the road to Damascus. To go arrest other Christians who have believed in Jesus Christ. And here in chapter 9, the books of Acts says a light shone upon him and blinded him, fell off of his horse. And it says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It's hard to kick against the bricks. Yes, Lord. It's hard to kick against the thorns. Right. You don't believe him? Try back and kick that wall sometimes. See if it don't hurt. He said, It's hard to kick against it. He said, Here, right, it's me. Paul, or Saul, but yet Paul, he Saul says, Who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. Lord, yeah. I'm Yeshua that you're persecuting. Because when you persecute the people, you're persecuting me. Saul blinded, but yet he believed. He went to Ananias, and Ananias washed his eyes, and the scales fell off, and he could see. Then he was a man on a mission. He was a man on a mission. He took the gospel from Jerusalem to the Gentiles. It was Paul who was named Saul, but now given a new name, Paul, to carry forth the gospel unto the Gentiles, to carry it out unto the uttermost. And see, it just began there in Jerusalem, but it's to carry by the four winds to the uttermost, to the north, the south, the east, and the west but that they all come back in to Jerusalem, to the heart, to the very center of the earth, the very place where the Lord's Spirit is moving and did move from there, the center point, out to the uttermost. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, you shall be endued with power from on high after the Holy Spirit it's come to fall again. Let's turn to Acts chapter 26. Paul coming to his last journey. He said, I must testify of him. He done been on three journeys and coming back. He said, I've got to go back to Jerusalem and testify of him both in Jerusalem and in the Rome. And the Rome. Agabus, one come prophesied to him. He took a belt and he tied his hands together and he come before Paul and he says, this is what they're going to do to you, Paul. If you go to Jerusalem, this is what they're going to do to you. They're going to tie you up. He said, it must be, for I must testify. That's what he said, I must testify of him in both Jerusalem and I also testify of him in Rome. Well, the Lord has told him that he would be that testimony of him. And yes, it meant bondage. Yes, it meant captivity. Yes, it meant Paul was stoned. It meant that he was shipwrecked. 
It meant that he was tried, he was beaten to the very point of his life, and one time left for dead. I guess the Lord raised him up and he said, I must go on for the testimony of Christ. No matter what the law is, church, we must go on for the testimony of Christ. Because there's time coming when it's going to be against the law to make witness of Jesus Christ. There's time coming, and already is in some countries. The First Baptist Church in Bethlehem of Judea was just given a proclamation by the Palestinians that they no longer have the authority for the protection of the government or the Palestinian authority. They no longer could say thus say. But because Israel is still a sovereign nation and Israel is still in control over Bethlehem, over the West Bank, over the Palestinians, that they still have the right to assemble as Christians at the only Baptist church in Bethlehem, the first Baptist church. And yet they're trying to quiet down. They're trying to take away their right to assemble. They're trying to legally pull the papers of charter away from them. But yet Israel still a democracy, a sovereign nation. And they're holding on. Pray for them yes. in Bethlehem. Pray for them in Jerusalem. Pray for them. In Isaiah chapter number 62, says for, verse number 1 says, For signs sake, I will not keep quiet until Jerusalem be enlightened yes. and receive the salvation of the Lord. Yes. That prophecy has been fulfilled and is still yet to be fulfilled. For only Jerusalem received in part, but they're soon to receive this hope. They're soon to know Him in a hope that there's going to be mighty tribulation coming. Where does that leave you and me? I hope God in the rapture. But are we for sure? Are we for sure? Will we go? Let's stand your feet. I didn't know for sure what the Lord would have. <coughs> All I have is a book full of his words. I still don't know what he has for you today. But I believe we've all received the word today. We've all should have received some inspiration, some edification, some lifting up. As a child of God, that's what we come from the house of the Lord for. To be lifted up. To be lifted up. To be lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. That's David on the left. I'll just put on some music. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That was anointed word. Yes. Sir. Praise the Lord. Yes. Encourage. <laughs> Times are going to be and soon will be just like the days of the first of the book of Acts. There seem to be that way here in America. They'll be persecuting. They'll be killing the Christians doing God's service. It's time right now well, you've got time. It's time right now. You don't have any long, any more time to say, "Not me, Lord," but you lead me. I don't want to lead myself no more. I want to do it your way. I want to repent, and I want to call on your name. 
You know, the Bible pastor Keith just read said, All that call upon the name of the Lord. That sounds meek and mild, don't it? I was just listening to, to what happened to Israel in 1967 when, when, when they were looking at the feet. Because there's been attacked from every direction. And they were looking at the feet. Prime Minister, a woman, what was her name? Go to my ear. 67, go to my ear. She called Henry Kissinger and said, if you don't help us, we're going to be slaughtered. We're going to, they're going to kill us all if you don't help us. And in the trenches, in the trenches where they were being overthrown and killed, the common soldiers, the Jews, started crying out and calling on the name of the Lord. I mean, they called on the name of the Lord in, in urgency, knowing they had no hope they were going to be massacred, and they had no hope. They called out on God. They called out on the Lord. Go to my ear, went to the red phone, Call, uh, called the red phone at the White House and, and uh, Nixon answered the phone in the midnight hour about 3 o'clock in the night. Told, told Nixon what was going on and whenever he was here in Golden Air's voice talking to him. He was remembering his childhood. He was remembering being raised up in a Christian home, his mother telling him that one of these days, son, you're going to be in a place of authority and power, and Israel's going to need you. He wasn't a man to do that kind of things. He was, you know, he was kind of sly and slidey and everything involved in all kinds of crooked politics. But let me tell you something. You remember what his mama said. And it clicked. And he signed a congressional order from the White House and sent the military equipment for Israel like that. And it, and it was over in six days. God can speedily save you. He can sanctify you. And it ain't going to have to take a year or two to save you. Just get to the place to know you're a sinner and you have no hope. Unless you cry out for mercy yes. and repent. It ain't like this. Oh, well, well, I guess I need to do that. I, well, I'm not through having a good time, but I guess I need to try to bend back a little bit and call on the name of the Lord. That ain't what it's talking about. It's going to be a place to know that you're going to go to hell if you don't. I mean, get real. If you don't call on and cry out to the name of Jesus Christ to be saved, you're going to hell. That's right. Yeah. That is the truth. Yes. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. There ain't no preaching fire and brimstone. It's a fact. I don't care if you got an if or an and or anything else in front of you. If you don't, you think, well, I don't know if that's true or not. Like I heard not long ago, you're just rolling the dice. And I tell you what, you're going to lose. If you cry out on God and you cry out on the Lord Jesus Christ and repent and become saved. This is the worst hell you will ever experience. This life is the worst hell you will ever experience. And let me tell you something. I'm 60 years old. And I wasted 34 years of my life. And let me tell you something. If there is no heaven or no hell. I've been blessed more whenever I served God than when I wasn't serving God. 
Yes, yes, Lord. Just for this life that Christ has saved me, I would serve Him again. I'd do it again because I've been more blessed than I was cursed before. He redeemed the time. He redeemed the time. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm not begging you. I'm not pleading with you no more. You know where you're at. And it's time to quit, quit playing games. Quit playing games. You're the only one who can make that bet. Make that decision. You're the only one to make it. Is it is what you're doing? Is what you're doing outside of Christ worth going to hell over? Is it worth eternal damnation? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this occasion. We thank you for the anointed word. Lord, to know that the disciples were just common people, Lord. And you poured your spirit out on Pentecost. Lord, we know that next Sunday is Pentecost. This could be another Pentecost Sunday. This coming Sunday could be another Pentecost like the one the disciples in the upper room experienced. But the devil don't like it, and I know it. But just like Jesus said to the disciples, and 500 gathered there on the Mount of Olives whenever he ascended into the clouds. Lord, you said, go and tarry. Go and tarry in Jerusalem. And I'm reminded of how that we've got a week here in front of us before Pentecost. And, and Lord, you're, you, I feel like you're saying to us, Lord, go and tarry until you're endued with power. I feel you're saying that to the church, the body of Christ right now, to, 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 to meditate on you and to, to surrender to you and, and, and focus on you and get the tone of your, your voice down just like a mother's voice in our spiritual man because you want us to be born to the Spirit. And, and that birth of the Spirit will have a connection with us and your voice will be in us just like our mother's voice is in us. And I remember... I remember perfectly in my mind hearing her talking to me. I know you're talking to me. And I know you're talking to other people here right now. And I just pray for each other. Pray for one another. And I, I, I pray for some time here today, Lord. But surely before next before next Sunday at Pentecost, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. And fall on our knees because your word says every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess. I just pray it be before it's too late. I pray it before it's too late. Give you the glory for all that are saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love y'all. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Pray for you. Yeah. Need prayer. Come up here. We pray. Whatever it is. Okay. Otherwise, you just me. Yeah, I didn't mean I could do this. I know. I need the man to come to the judge. I don't know. Dale got to have that food for Monday night dinner out of there. What you doing? What you doing? Huh? What you doing? We're going to get some groceries. Doing that for <laughs> Taking you somewhere. Lord, <laughs> 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 Thank you.